but look how it's come back to life. It's the miracle of, of all time. It is. Uh, here's a headline. It's number three, you guys, if you want to put it up, uh, just to get things going here. Trump fires back after Iranian leader condemns him on Twitter. Trump fires back and says, make Iran great again. <laughs> Today's video is a very unique discussion between Jan Markle and Pastor Jack Hibbs about Bible prophecy, Iran's influence, the development potential of Christianity in Iran, Vladimir Putin's role in the Middle East and the power struggle between Turkey and Russia. Jan Markle exposes false prophesies and teachings, criticizes the decline of sound doctrine in churches, and discusses the connection between climate change and the Bible, arguing that it is the result of not having faith in God. Jan Markle is a respected figure in the Christian community who monitors and exposes false prophesies and teachings and organizes the largest Bible prophecy conference in North America. Besides, there are also comments from David Jeremiah and Jimmy Evans about the end times and prophecies fulfilled in the Bible. Second Peter chapter 2 about false prophecies, false prophets and false teachers. And Jan's going to talk to us tonight about some things that are going on uh, in the body of Christ that are indeed false, but very popular. Oh, the false is always popular. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Iran's leader condemned Trump on Twitter, Iran's former crown prince predicted the regime would collapse and the Bible showed Iran would stand on par with Russia, while a member of Iran's parliament offered a reward for killing Trump, saying see America's influence on Iran. Young people in Iran are rising for freedom and some are searching for the gospel, leading to the potential for rapid growth of Christianity in the country if the mullahs are removed. The fact that Vladimir Putin is named King of the Middle East is in line with biblical prophecy, potentially fulfilling the role of Gog from the land of Magog. Vladimir Putin's efforts to revive the Russian economy have weakened and war may be needed to stimulate the economy. But it would be dangerous to tangle with a wounded bear. Turkey and Russia are competing for power in the Middle East and Mediterranean region, focusing on oil and natural resources, leading to an unstable situation. But look how it's come back to life. It's the miracle of, of all time. It is. Uh, here's a headline. It's number three, you guys, if you want to put it up, uh, just to get things going here. Trump fires back after Iranian leader condemns him on Twitter. Trump fires back and says, make Iran great again. <laughs> uh, and that kind of... Um, now look, this, this is something where along the, the issue with Iran, because it's in the news, it's, you guys hear about it every time Don and I get together, but um, it's number, uh, take number two, you guys, is former Iranian crown prince says Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, regime on the brink of collapse. That may or may not be true. The reason why Jan and I take issue with this, it may be true on the short term, you guys, but we know that from the Ezekiel uh, description, which you guys hear about every month. You're probably getting tired of hearing about it, but every month there's more news uh, that is formulating regarding possible fulfillment of Isaiah 30, er, Ezekiel 38. Boris Johnson, Trump, and Netanyahu are standing against the globalist agenda, which is a real danger and a threat to control the people and the economy. The speaker discusses the attack on the pre-trib rapture and the importance of being encouraged by the theological argumentations for the rapture happening before the seven-year tribulation period. The speaker discusses the distinction between the church, tribulation saints, and Old Testament saints, emphasizing the Jewish nature of the tribulation period and the role of the Holy Spirit in the salvation of the Jewish nation. Believers are called to live for Christ and be ready for His return, while tribulation saints are called to die for Him and the church is referred to as having fine white linen clean and bright. The church has steered away from teaching Bible prophecy because it is seen as controversial and not productive for church growth. Money will play an essential role in all of the events of the future, including the end times. There's a couple of chapters in the book of Revelation where the economic center of the world at that time, Babylon, is destroyed and it occupies dozens of verses talking about the destruction of Babylon, the center of the monetary world. So money's always been important in the past. Everything connected with economics is increasingly important today, but it's driving our world. I think we can assume money will remain important in the future and that it will dominate our world even more in days to come. Get ready. One more item deserves mention. This is pretty up-to-date and pretty right on for right now, and that's the rise of all digital currencies, also known as cryptocurrencies. 
While national currencies such as the dollar or the euro are officially backed by government reserves, digital currencies are decentralized. They don't have a physical foundation in gold or other tangible assets. Instead, cryptocurrencies exist entirely in the world of cyberspace. They are produced online, stored online, and spent online. Incredibly, there are more than 6,500 cryptocurrencies circulating in the world today. Now, many see these digital currencies as the wave of the future. They imagine a world where physical currency has been entirely removed and all transactions are processed digitally. Many voices are even declaring the need for a central bank digital currency, CBDC, which would be a government-backed cryptocurrency designed to be the legal tender of a nation or perhaps even the entire world. The Bible says that the rapture is going to happen. It's going to happen at any time. It could happen right now during this time. There's nothing that has to take place for the rapture to occur. It's signless. And so what happens after the rapture? Immediately after the rapture, the tribulation begins. When the saints all go up, all hell breaks loose on earth. And all these tribulation things will happen. If we believe that the rapture could happen at any time, and we say we do, and we clap when we say it, if we believe it could happen today, what that means is all of these things I'm talking about couldn't be any further into the future than a seven-year period. And most of them will happen in the middle of the tribulation as we move toward the end. So this is not just, oh, out in the future someplace. Oh, it's so far away, Pastor, I don't want to hear. No, no, no. If the rapture is signless, if it's imminent, and it could happen today, all of these things could happen in the tomorrows after that today. Thank God we won't be here, we'll be in heaven, but those things will be happening on this earth. In other words, Satan will cause his false prophet to appear like a meek and gentle lamb, when in reality he will have the heart of a destroyer. Satan will be the power behind it all, and the Antichrist will be the political leader, while the false prophet will be the spiritual leader and the economic leader. And he'll be able to accomplish incredible things like bringing the Antichrist back to life after a mortal wound and enabling an idolatrous image to speak. You can read all about it. It sounds fantastic, but it's in the Bible, and it's gonna happen. The false prophet will also lead people into the worship of the Antichrist. His influence will be supernatural and demonic. For our purpose here, I want to direct your attention to the false prophet's economic power. He has two things that he does. He controls the spiritual temperature of the world and the economic temperature of the world. I want you to hear what the false prophet says at this particular time. Through the prophecy of John in the book of Revelation. Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who is understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666 inch. Today is called, What is My Worldview? Uh, and is it biblical? Is it secular? Is it based on truth or deception? This is a huge issue because it determines how we live and prepare for eternity. Now, George Barna, who is a researcher, has done a massive survey on worldview and studying worldview. And it says here, I'm reading now from the research, a research study from Barna Group suggests that a large share of the nation's moral and spiritual challenges are directly attributable to the absence of a biblical worldview among Americans. Citing the findings from a just co completed national survey of 2033 adults that showed only 4% of adults have a biblical worldview as the basis of their decision making. The survey also discovered that only 9% of born-again Christians, now listen to that, only 9% of born-again Christians have such a perspective of life. The numbers were even lower among other religious classifications. Protestants were 7%, adults who attend mainline Protestant churches 2%, Catholics less than one half of 1%. The denominations that produced the highest proportion of adults with a biblical worldview were non-denominational Protestant churches at 13%, Pentecostal churches at 10%, and Baptist churches at 8%. So you say, well, well what constitutes uh, you know, a, a biblical worldview? Well, let me talk about that because when Barna was researching this, he specifically gave uh, some very clear guidance on 
what people believed, which was a basic biblical worldview, and whether they believed these things or didn't believe these things. For the purpose of the research, a biblical worldview was defined as believing that absolute moral truths exist, that such truth is defined by the Bible. Here's what I want to say to you. And maybe this comes as a strange message at a time like this, but I want you to hear it because it's true. Following Jesus carries a cost. Throughout history, many Christians have paid that cost with their lives. Others have paid it with their reputations. Others have paid it with their convenience, their relationships, their freedom, and even their health and wealth. When Christ is everything, everything else is nothing in comparison. Maybe you've not lost your wherewithal in your life. Many of you have probably paid minimal cost to follow Christ. You know, our circumstances could change. And at some point, they will change, probably sooner rather than later. I feel them starting to change right now with all that's going on in our schools, with what's been pushed on us in the corporations. With big tech and all of this, I feel the icy fingers of that reaching out to grab hold of us and gravitate us toward the center. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.